Extreme travel is always dangerous. Deadly currents and whirlpools on rivers, avalanches of ice on mountains. But what if a wall of fire, more than 500 million kilometers in size, gets in the way? Although impossible on Earth, this can happen in space, and the space probes Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 might have recently encountered such an obstacle. Its temperature exceeded that of fires on Earth dozens of times. 45 years have passed since the launch of Voyagers from Cape Canaveral. They've visited four distant planets, taken vivid pictures, and conducted hundreds of scientific investigations. Then the probes went beyond the solar system, where a real red-hot hell awaited them. And this was not the only eerie and sometimes delightful adventure on their way. But recently, Voyager 1 started sending data that had scientists stumped. So what did scientists learn about the Voyager's adventures so far? Did the spacecraft manage to make it over the nightmarish wall of fire? And why would the entire journey of the probes in interstellar space be accompanied by the gentle rustle of rain. For almost half a century, probe equipment that made it all the way beyond the solar system has been working well almost all the time. It withstood the space environment with its nightmarish radiation, low temperatures, dust as sharp as needles. This seems unbelievable. But it was possible thanks to the excellent level of protection the space probes have. They're equipped with multi-layer thermal insulation, heat shields, and plastic jackets. Individual elements of their defense line are quite simple. For example, shortly before launch, strips of kitchen aluminium foil were glued to some of the cables as a protection against radiation, and it worked perfectly. The amount of work and people put into the development and implementation of the project is about 11,000 years. This is equivalent to a third of the effort expended to build the Great Pyramids of Giza. When the probes were launched into space, they headed for Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. There, voyagers took many extraordinary images. In addition to the iconic pale blue dot and volcanic eruption on Jupiter's satellite Io, there are less known but stunning images. Check out this tete-a-tete -tete of the Earth and the Moon. The image was taken as Voyager 1 headed toward Jupiter. In this image, both our planet and its satellite look like two crescents moving somewhere in the same direction. And here, you can see the edge of Titan's disk, Saturn's largest satellite, captured by Voyager 2. But why does it come in two colors? It's just that the mysterious haze at an altitude of a couple hundred miles from the atmospheric surface looks blue. The atmosphere itself appears to be orange and is mostly composed of nitrogen with a mixture of methane and possibly hydrogen and carbon compounds. It's believed that this is what the Earth's atmosphere was like prior to the emergence of life. After flying around the planets, voyagers turned off their cameras and some other devices to save energy. But other devices were still able to conduct research, sending data back to Earth. Without much trouble, the probes reached the edge of the solar system, and then the edge of the heliosphere, filled with solar wind. They entered the heliopause region, where the pressure of the solar wind and the interstellar plasma is equalized. In this mysterious place, which scientists had previously studied only through simulations, the probes made surprising discoveries. Researchers had expected the magnetic field of the galaxy near the heliopause to be tilted towards the solar magnetic field. But the probes found no change in the direction of the magnetic field, and the particle density was ten times greater than in the solar wind. Flows of solar and interstellar particles collide in that region at unimaginable speeds. It makes them glow and form a wall of fire. That's what astronomers call the phenomenon, although it's not known for sure if it's a kind of fire we are familiar with and if it's really burning there. But it's clear that the plasma at the outer boundary of the heliopause is about 30,000 to 50,000 Kelvin. At first glance, it seems impossible to go through this region undamaged. But the probes succeeded. The plasma turned out to be very thin, much smaller than the air on the surface of the Earth. So it didn't heat up the probes to critical temperatures. Studying the red-hot wall is very important for scientists, after all. It is the heliopause that is the solar system's last line of defense against dangerous cosmic rays and interstellar dust. 
The heliosphere blocks approximately 70% of the deadly radiation coming from deep space. Without it, life on Earth would have been impossible. And the wall of fire that Voyagers discovered most likely plays an important role here as well. But we still don't know whether astronauts will be able to overcome it during interstellar missions in the future. According to astrophysicists at Boston University, it largely depends on the shape of the heliosphere. Is there some safe loophole in it for Starship crews? Scientists used to believe that the heliospheric bubble was shaped like a comet's tail. But new research suggests that it might have the shape of a donut or a croissant. If so, it'll have gaps in it, which astronomers will have to find. As the probes entered interstellar space, they recorded different sounds. We wouldn't have heard them, but the instruments picked up the noise and transmitted it to Earth. At first, scientists couldn't determine their source. Later, they've come to the conclusion that it's the sound of gas in interstellar space. And there's much more of it than previously thought. In the meantime, the spaceships continue to transmit valuable data to Earth, although it takes about 20 hours for the signal to reach us. Besides, not everything ran smoothly. Voyagers have had problems on more than one occasion. Back in April 1978, Voyager 1's main radio receiver malfunctioned. Since then, it's been operating on a backup receiver. Recently, something strange started to happen. Voyager 1's telemetry began sending absurd data back to Earth. Telemetry is the measurement and collection of information to provide to the operator or user. The probe continued to keep its antenna pointed at Earth. The mission specialists investigated the situation and identified the source of incorrect telemetry. It turned out that the information was transmitted through a computer that stopped working many years ago. It was corrupting the data. Then, a command was sent to switch to the right computer. After that, everything went back to normal. But the cause of the malfunction is still unknown. In addition, the Voyager's power sources are getting cooled and depleted. They're no longer able to fully maintain the temperature of the equipment. However, NASA engineers claim that the spacecraft still has enough fuel to keep its instruments running until at least 2025. One day we'll lose contact with the Voyagers, but they'll continue their journey through interstellar space, mostly among void. Only in about 30,000 years will the Voyagers pass through the Oort Cloud, a shell of comets and icy debris orbiting the solar system. And only in about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will be closer to the star Gliese 445, 17.6 light years from Earth, than to our Sun. By that time, Voyager 2 will pass 1.7 light years from the red dwarf star Ross 248 of the constellation Andromeda. Looking even further into the future, in about 230 million years, the solar system and Voyagers will make a complete revolution around the Milky Way. It's impossible to predict what will happen to Earth by then. But can the probe survive that long in interstellar space? Scientists believe that it mostly depends on the amount of dust in the Milky Way. This dust flies at several miles per second, like a nanometeor shower. The dust particles slowly erode the shell of the probes, and even a dust particle the size of one thousandth of a millimeter leaves its microscopic mark on the ship upon impact. Scientists have repeatedly modeled the trajectories of the probe, their encounters with dust clouds and possible damage. Calculations by Nick Oberg of the Captain Astronomical Institute in the Netherlands have shown that the Voyager Golden Records have a chance of surviving the longest. Because of how valuable information they carry about Earth for a possible alien encounter is, these records have great protection. Underneath the gold cover of the gold-plated disks is an aluminium coating, and underneath that is a copper base. The half-life of plutonium-238 in the Voyager nuclear reactor is 87.7 years, and in a small area of the coating of uranium-238, it is 4.5 billion years. We can hardly imagine such a distant future, but scientists have painted us a rough picture. At that time, the Milky Way should already collide with the Andromeda galaxy. The spiral shape of the Milky Way would be severely deformed and possibly completely destroyed. The collision could eject the probes from the new monster galaxy. The chance of this event is estimated as 1 in 5. In this case, the main threat to the golden records in intergalactic space would be cosmic rays and strange hot gas molecules. If the Voyagers remain inside the unified galaxy, their fate will depend on the same dust. If the probes get into a dense dust cloud, they'll have an enormous chance of collapsing. 
but there may not be much dust because star formation at that time will practically stop. Voyagers will drift through a completely unrecognizable galaxy, free from main sequence stars. In space, there'll be almost only black holes and the remains of stars, white dwarfs and neutron stars. There'll be complete darkness everywhere. Only extremely rare flashes of supernovae will occasionally illuminate the sky. In this inhospitable world, voyagers will be able to wander for trillions and trillions of years. Meanwhile, other probes will explore the outskirts of the solar system and interstellar space. There are already interesting designs for future spacecraft that will venture into interstellar space. NASA has created the Interstellar Probe concept. It's planned to be equipped with many modern and reliable devices. Among other things, the probe will be able to thoroughly study the solar wind and its use for sailing spacecraft.